Okay, so I'm realizing this is my first time playing 4K games, and honestly, you don't really know what you're missing until you've played 4K games. I've been chasing an Xbox Series X for almost a year now. Just before the new year, I ended up caving and getting the Xbox Series S. That system is such a good buy for the price. I've done some videos on the Series S already, and it is a great console, trust me. Straight up, it changed my entire perspective on console gaming coming from PC after 10 years. I figured if it was that good, is the Series X really that much better? I'd been on the chase for so long and honestly, I just got lucky and found one on Amazon. Today I'm going to jump into unboxing, setup, and a quick review of the Xbox Series X. Okay, so jumping into unboxing, getting into a system like this can never be dull. Unboxing this is like Christmas Day as a kid. Taking a look at the whole thing, you've got an image of the Xbox itself with some Xbox branding. 1 terabyte of storage badge. On the back, you've got their corny slogan, Power Your Dreams. It kind of sounds like somebody tossed that out in a boardroom and it stuck. And of course, you got a photo of our homeboy Master Chief. On the side, you've got details of all this system can do, which includes 4K gaming at 120Hz, 8K HDR content, variable refresh, and a Blu-ray drive. Jumping into the box, this thing opens up like a loot chest, which is fitting. The system itself is actually smaller than I thought it'd be, which I kind of really like. As well, you've got the HDMI cable, which is a 2.1 cable, which you'll need if you're looking to take advantage of that 4K 120. They've also just got the power cable itself, no more big supply bricks. And finally, this black controller, which is absolutely beautiful. So taking a look at the system itself, man, does this look good. All of these new gen systems just look so damn good. I've said it before and I'll say it again, all of these systems look like they're meant to be a part of your home rather than a standout gaming console or computer. The matte black finish is minimal and elegant and it just looks incredible. Taking a look at the top vents, you've got the only spot of color on this system, that being Xbox's neon green. The whole time I thought it was actually LED lights looking at photos similar to the PS5, but it is just paint. Not that it's a bad thing, but it still looks nice. If you're worried about size, it's not overly large. The Series S was absolutely tiny, but this one is just a little bigger overall, though not as tall as the PS5. On the front, you've got the single power button, which is an Xbox logo, a USB port, connection pairing button, and finally the disk drive. I don't know about you, but I've gotten so used to the idea of having no disk drive that these are totally underrated. On the back end, you've got all the extra inputs, more USB ports, Ethernet, the power, the storage expansion slot, and HDMI. Now the system itself can be placed on its side or vertically. Similar to my PS5, if I've got a desk setup, this is going vertical mode all the way. But on my TV stand, this will likely be on its side. Overall, I'm 100% into the aesthetic of the system. It's minimal and it looks really nice. Whether it's on a TV setup or a desk setup, this definitely fits. Moving on to the controller. In hand, it's almost identical to the previous generation. Feels like there could have been more next-gen features here. Coming from reviewing my PS5, the controller feels a little weak. The black finish for this matches the system, whereas the Xbox Series S, you do get a white controller that matches that system. The buttons are tactile and clicky and feel really good. One noticeable difference from the old gen is they've got these micro dots on the triggers which really help grip, as well as on the back end. This is a really nice touch and makes the controller feel great in hand. As well, they've got the share button in the center of the controller which is new. This makes it easier to snag screenshots and clips. The port is different as well, being USB-C versus the old micro USB. The controllers are using AA batteries. Some people love it, some people hate it. I prefer rechargeable myself, but rechargeable batteries do just fine. Lastly, you've got the headphone jack at the bottom for headsets. Overall, the controller is great. It feels good in the hand, especially with the added grippiness. So setting up this console is as basic as it gets. Once you plug it in and power up, you sign in with your Microsoft game account there's probably a big update, so just grab a drink and chill for a bit. But once you're in, you're met with the dashboard, and honestly, it could be better. Jumping through the UI, it's a little bland, really. It kind of feels outdated, but aside, it is functional. You've got your main pages that you can customize. For me, I keep it simple with just some pinned games and a media page. I'd be hopeful for a UI overhaul in the future, but I'd also be fine without it. The settings are basic if you're jumping through, although the video settings can be a bit weird depending on your display. Moving from my office to my 4K TV, I had to manually set my resolution to 4K. As basic as the dashboard is, at least you can customize it decently. I'm a huge fan of the dynamic backgrounds. Now something massively noticeable is the pure speed of this console. 
Everything from boot up to starting a game is just wicked fast. If you're coming from an old gen system, this is really going to be a huge upgrade. Gone are the days of long boot up times and long load screens. I talked about it in a previous video, but my Xbox One S simply didn't cut it for me. The load times were long and honestly, for me, it just wasn't the greatest experience. Jumping into this new system, especially with quick resume, it feels totally futuristic. As I game on both PC and console, quick resume is one of those features I just wish that was available on PC. This for me is an absolute game changer. Quick resume allows you to hop between games instantly and continue where you last left off. Within seconds, I can hop into Halo Infinite and jump right back into Forza Horizon. Okay, so gaming on the system is an absolute spectacle. Games look outright gorgeous, especially the ones that are optimized for the Xbox Series X and S. Pushing out a crisp 4K at 60 or 120Hz is a guaranteed good experience. I've said it before, but having only ever gamed at 1440p or 1440p wide, you don't actually know what you're missing until you try it. The first time I jumped into a game, it was immediately noticeable. While I don't have any HDMI 2.1 displays to take advantage of the 120Hz, 4K60 still looks great. I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on an HDMI 2.1 display to really test out this console's capabilities. Seriously, if you have a recommendation for any 2.1 displays, please let me know in the comments. Truly, if you're coming from an older gen system, or are perhaps a PC gamer like myself, if you can get down with a controller, you're seriously in for a treat. Just like the Series S, console gaming for me is definitely back on the menu. The best part is, this system is in its infancy, so developers are likely to get more and more out of the system as time goes on. Now talking about Game Pass, honestly this is what ties the entire package together so well. Game Pass is literally just so wildly good, it is a must have. Not only is their library of games huge, they actually have really good titles. I'm talking AAA titles released day one. I had a really good time playing Forza Horizon 5, I still haven't gotten through it. I'm still also playing Halo Infinite which was available day one. The freedom of choice is so great here because gone are the days where you'd have to buy or rent a game only to have it be trash. With Game Pass, you can actually download and play a game in no time and you're not stuck paying 60 or 70 bucks for a bad time. Not only that, if a game has a cloud gaming icon, you don't even have to install it to play. While it's definitely not as good as installing it, you can still definitely try it out and get an idea. Okay, so Game Pass is kick-ass, but a feature exclusive to the Series X is the disk drive. Honestly, having used the Xbox Series S, I really didn't care as much for the disk drive. While it would have been a nice to have, I didn't really miss it much. That kind of changed a bit as I unboxed my PS5 recently. That video is linked below, but the thing is, I had forgotten how good the simplicity of throwing in a game disc is. Not to mention the used game market is an easy way to recover the cost of the system over time. Yes, Game Pass is sweet, and there can be digital discounts at times, but nothing will ever beat being able to pick up a game on sale or borrowing one from a friend. And talking about storage, this is definitely a plus with the system actually having a 1TB SSD. This is double the storage that's available on the Series S. Nothing is stopping you from buying the expansion card for the Series S and X, but at that point, you've paid the price of this Series X. I will say, again, if you're used to having an SSD on a gaming PC and you're thinking of making a move to console or simply trying it, now is definitely the time. This SSD is blazing quick. From startup, I'm literally gaming with quick resume within 20 or so seconds, and even without quick resume, I'm gaming within a minute. When installing games, the games are definitely huge, but with 800 gigs of usable storage, depending who you are, you should be able to fit loads of games on here. Popular titles like Forza 5, Halo Infinite, and Warzone do take up a lot of space, but if you're installing legacy games like Xbox 360, those don't take up nearly as much storage. So a feature I use more and more is the sharing options. The share button for screen capture is actually so easy to use, and really this is another one of those features where I feel like it's super futuristic, again, I'm, and really this also feels like a feature that's super new gen. Any screenshot or clip I take using the share button is available to download and share through the Xbox app, which is pretty sweet. One thing I notice is with the Series X compared to S, there's more clip capture options. With the Series X, I'm able to snag 4K HDR for up to 30 seconds. So yes, the Xbox is a gaming beast, but there's also all the other features that make this thing an entertainment king. The system outputs up to 8K HDR content, that I haven't tried yet. More popular would be the streaming apps and music. Hopping into Netflix or Disney+, Plus, this puts out a beautiful 4K image, and if your TV or display supports HDR, this definitely does the trick. 
I don't own any Blu-ray discs, but I'm looking forward to trying it on here just to see how it looks. Okay, so overall, what do I think? Honestly, this Xbox is simply next level. I've also recently unboxed a PlayStation 5, so I'm still wrapping my head around this whole new generation of console gaming. There's just so much to dive into. Unlike the Series S, I feel this almost has to be used on a 4K display. I don't have a 4K display at my desk, so it kind of feels like overkill. I'll mostly be using this on my 4K basement or living room TV. I will mention that the Xbox Series S is far more obtainable. If you don't foresee being able to snag one of these, don't talk yourself out of a good time. Hop on the next generation of consoles and enjoy yourself. For this system though, I'm super happy I was shocked at the 4K image. I had simply never tried 4K gaming and it's incredible. It's nice to be surprised by these things. While the system can still be very hard to get, the price point is still coming in under a low tier PC build due to component pricing. To push out a 4K image up to 120 hz for 500 bucks is an absolute steal. Nowadays, I'm spending more and more time on my couch with a controller versus a mouse and keyboard, and it's been a whole new yet familiar experience. I'm looking forward to seeing what developers end up squeezing out of these systems. Anyways, that's been it. Thanks for watching. Till next time.